Okay, so in this video, we will find the derivative of sine of x using the following three results. Now, the first two limits we have derived previously, and the third result is a fundamental trigonometric identity. Hopefully, it is a familiar one, and that is that sine of a plus b is equal to sine of a cos of b plus cos of a sine of b. So, the derivative of sine of x, well, from the definition will be the limit as h approaches 0. Well, f of x plus h, well, f of x is sine of x, so we will have sine of x plus h minus f of x, which is sine of x. over, of course, h. f of x plus h minus f of x over h, as we're letting h approach 0, will return the derivative of f, which in this case is sine of x. Well, the first step should be obvious. We will use our third result, namely the trigonometric identity. So we have sine of x plus h, so here x is, or a is x, and b is h. So this will give us sine of x cos of h, plus, now cos of x sine of h. of course, minus sine of x over h. Everything else is the same. The question is now what? Well, if you notice here, there are two terms that are multiples of sine of x. So we will pull them together and factor a sine of x. And to make it a little bit more obvious, I'll factor a negative sine of x from these two terms. So from this term, let me rewrite the limit. So if I factor, and of course everything is over h, if I factor from negative sine of x, negative sine of x, that leaves me with 1, and the second term, if we factor negative sine of x from this term, well, the sine goes away, but we have to cancel off the negative, so we'll be left with negative cos of h. So that's putting this term and this term together, factoring negative sine of x, and of course, everything is over h. So that leaves us with this term, cos of x times sine of h over h. I will pull the cos of x outside and combine the sine of h over h together. And now we're essentially done. With respect to h, sine of x is a constant. It does not depend on h. And look at the second term. 1 minus cos of h over h, as h is approaching 0. So we already know that as h approaches 0, 1 minus cos of h over h approaches 0. 0 times negative sine of x will also be approaching 0. So the first term is shrinking to 0. What about the second term? Well, sine of h over h, once again, if we look at the cos of x, cos of x is a constant with respect to h, so cos of x stays cos of x, but as h approaches 0, we know that sine of h over h approaches 1. So this term approaches 1. So now we're essentially done. As h approaches 0, we are considering the sum of two terms, the first shrinks to 0, so it just goes away, it vanishes. 
The second is made up of cos of x times sine of h over h, but as h goes to 0, sine of h over h gets closer and closer to 1, so this will be in the limit 1 times cos of x, which is simply cos of x. And we're done. So we have a very interesting result. The derivative of sine of x is simply cosine of x. Now as an exercise, I want you to find the derivative of cos of x. And I want you to prove, using the exact same argument, that the derivative of cos of x is, well it won't be exactly sine, but it will be negative the sine of x. And to prove this you need three things. You will need the first two limits, and you will need a similar identity, not for sine of course, but for cosine. And what you will need is the following. The fact that cosine of a plus b is equal to cosine of a, cosine of b. Now the sine will, the sine, sorry, will change. The plus will become a minus, minus the sine of a, sine of b. So if you combine the exact same argument that we used to show that we have used to show that the derivative of sine of x is cos of x, if you combine the same argument with the knowledge of these two limits and the following trigonometric identity for cosine, you will be able to show that the derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. And that's it.